Which of those two <laughs> thrilling finishes last night had you more on the edge of your seat? Well, I'm going to say UCLA versus um, uh, uh, Gonzaga. Obviously, Michigan State and Kent State went into overtime. That was a sensational game. I'm not taking anything away from it. Of course, I was rooting for my man Tom Izzo, but his team, they weren't consistent throughout the night. Um, they were up and down, and, and they fought and they fought, but they just didn't have their A game with them. And, and Marquise, like KD pointed out, he really did a <clears> magnificent <throat> job of controlling the game. He was incredibly impressive. But in the case of UCLA versus Gonzaga, those are two heavy hitters. We knew that coming into the game and this kid Jacques to, to score 29 points that was it but Timmy 36 and 13 I mean Lord was he putting on the show he was pretty much unstoppable but I got to tell you for sit up there for UCLA to be up double digits and then to surrender that league and Zaga comes back takes the lead and then UCLA comes back because I thought it was done with about two a little over two minutes left they were down about eight somehow some way they got back into it and then they hit the three to take the lead and then for Gonzaga to come back and hit the three, you know, to take back the lead. And then for UCLA to go down court, I was expecting something. But obviously the point guard got stripped and that's what happened. I would tell you that was the most exciting part to me, uh, even more so than Kansas State versus Michigan State. And that was a very exciting game as well. The amazing thing about UCLA is they were playing without two starters. Uh, then Bona and Jalen Clark out for the game. Well, an incredible effort. But Stephen A., where are you from anyway? New York City, baby. New York, New York City. City. Well, you know, know we had a bunch well. of dudes from Manhattan yeah. in New York City yeah. playing for a team from Manhattan, Kansas. Yeah. And look, Mr. New York took over the garden. The dream of any kid growing up in New York, you know it, I know it, is to go to the garden, play on the big stage. And all Marquise Newell did was he was the toughest matchup in the tournament, no doubt about it. 20 points, 19 assists, five steals. It's basically never been done. How about this? He went part Kemba Walker. He went part Patrick Mahomes. Rolls his ankle, gets back up, gets back in the game, falling down, knocking down, shooting a jumper. Get in the lane. They could not contain him. To me, for that game to go into overtime, for basically Marquis Nadal to pick himself up after rolling his ankle and dominating that game in the manner in which he did and the plays that he made, to me, that was incredible luck. The UCLA-Gonzaga game is just another in the great games that UCLA and Gonzaga have played. I've seen that play before. It won a national championship for Villanova. I've never seen what Marquise Noel's did. He was impossible to defend. Tom Izzo put it, put it best. He said they were mesmerized by him. He had the ball in his hands. You get mesmerized by him, and all of a sudden, scores it. Drops a dime. Throws a lob. Even the fake, I got a call from the coach on the sidelines, Keontae Johnson back doors from 35 feet. He throws a perfect dime. So, to me, two great games. Look, college basketball never disappoints. This last night didn't disappoint. But what Marquise Noel did, that was Kenny Anderson. That was Kemba Walker. That was some of the great guard play in the history of Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. A dude from Harlem comes back home and does what he does on that stage Man, I'll tell you one thing. That blew me away. Well, it, it blew me away, too. I'm not taking any way from, or anything away from that kid. He put, on, put, put forth a sensational game. There's no doubt about that. But when you – even Tom Izzo said it himself after the game, we were just up and down. We didn't seem to have right. our bearings under us all night long. He was like, I expected us to play better, not taking anything away from Kansas because they made some good plays, and we understand that. But the flip side to it is that we can play better. We have played better. But that wasn't the case this particular afternoon. We just didn't have it the way that – that I expected us to have it. When you look at UCLA and, G and Gonzaga, you expected that kind of nip and tuck, that kind of tug of war. And they delivered on the goods, particularly in the waning moments. It was back and forth, back and forth. I thought Gonzaga was done. Then the next thing you know, I thought I thought UCLA was done. Then the next thing you know, it comes down to a last shot. Oh, no, it was another last shot, another three. And then after that, they come back down court and you get stripped. And obviously, Gonzaga ultimately seals the deal that way. I didn't... Ex I I didn't expect all of that. I knew it was going to be a thriller. But the way that it ended, the theatrics of it all, that's why, to me, I looked at Gonzaga and, and UCLA, and I thought that in terms of hype, I mean, I, I thought that delivered the goods. I just did. Yeah, I, look, I can't, look, we were treated to a, an unbelievable night of college basketball last night. And, I look, I agree. I mean, that, that finish was unbelievable. I was ready to turn it off. And then all yeah. of a sudden, 
you know, UCLA made a little run and said, oh, man, I want to get to sleep. Ah, let me watch. I'm up this late. I might as well continue to watch this game. And yeah. my wife's a UCLA grad. She was obviously crushed. But uh, Gonzaga, UCLA, I'll tell you what, they should play every single year. That should be a game that should be played every single year. It's the best matchup on the West Coast. I know that UCLA is going to the Big Ten. But that yeah. is a must watch, must schedule, non-conference game for the good of the game of college basketball mm -hmm. uh, throughout the country. Do you think that Marquise Noel will be able to uh, lead K-State to a championship for his team? I think he has the ability to do that. He's the most unique player in the final, in, in the NCAA tournament right now. Think about this. Mr. New York played in Madison Square Garden with a chance to go to the Final Four. Mr. New York, who basically hands assists, 31 of his 42 assists are for a layup or a dunk. I mean, think about that for a second. He's basically handing you baskets. His ability to dominate the game at five foot eight. He is the toughest matchup left in the NCAA tournament. He's impossible to game plan for. And the ball's in his hands a majority of their offensive possessions. I think Marcus Noel can lead them to a national championship. Coach, I want to go to another level because I want to go to their next opponent, which is FAU. Um, I got to tell you something. I got to confess this on national TV. I'm happy Tennessee lost. And I and don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, listen, I love Knoxville. I love the university, whatever. Their defense is big time, no doubt. But offensively, particularly watching them last week, and they just struggled too much. I didn't – I don't – I saw them winning in ugly fashion, making games uglier than it would or normally be. And that's why I didn't want Tennessee to win. I'm shocked they lost to FAU. But what does that tell you about FAU and what Kansas State has to go up against them? Talk to me about them and what you've been seeing from them. Florida Atlanta. FAU is the real deal. They're an elite defensive team. They run you off the three-point line, but it's offensively, right? They play four guards and a post. And those four guards, whoever gets the rebound, Stephen A., they're busting it out, and they're just filling lanes. There's no signed lane. So they're hard to get matched up with, and that's the problem that Tennessee had. Once FAU got stops in the transition, Tennessee's playing those two bigs. They couldn't find people. So now all of a sudden they're pushing it. They're attacking. They're getting a paint touch. They're kicking out. They're knocking down threes. 44% of their shots come from the three-point line. They don't turn it over. They don't give up second shots. Undersized, but they have great quickness. They beat you to the ball. It's Boyd. It's Davis. It's Greenlee. It's, it's Martin. And you're talking about four guys on the floor at all times. I call them floor makers, uh, floor gamers and playmakers. Four guys on the floor at all times can knock down a three. The pace of this game will be ridiculous. Now, here's the one thing they will do against K-State. They'll switch all those ball screens. And by switching all those ball screens, they'll hopefully their goal will be to keep Marquise Noel in front and take away the assist. Well, the key to defending Noel is taking away the assist. Well, wait a minute now. If you're talking because we've been talking about Noel and we saw Kevin Durant raving about him, and he deserves it. He deserves all the props in the world, no doubt about that. But if you're talking about them under being undersized, but having quickness available to them, then they would seem to be the ideal. I mean, I mean, I'm not talking about ideal for Noel. It would be the ideal opponent to go up against him because you need quickness to keep a body in front of him, particularly if you're switching and to contain him. So the 20 points and 19 assists that we saw him register against Michigan State. You're telling me it's going to be significantly harder for him to pull something like that off against Florida Atlantic. That's what you're saying, right? It, it will be more difficult, and they play in spurts, Florida Atlantic offensive, but it'll be more difficult. But, look, I don't put anything by this dude. I mean, this dude grew up right, right up the street from Madison Square Garden. This is his stage. This is his world. This is his opportunity. Here's a guy that went away to come back to make a statement. And it's not just him. It's Masood who knocked down those two big threes from Harlem. It's not Queen uh, Naquan Tomlin. This is a very complete Kansas State team. This is going to be a terrific game to watch. I'm not betting against Marquise Noel. All right, I learned my lesson. That dude right there takes over games. He's impossible to game for him for. You might switch. He's still then going to get downhill. You might switch. He gets a paint touch. He reads the help defender. He makes the play. They can play ahead of the defense because they get stops defensively. I'm not betting against Marquise Noel. He's won me over. The dude okay. is the most exciting player in college basketball. UConn Gonzaga, what do you see? I, see, I, have, I have UConn winning this game. I think big-time game. Obviously, there's a great matchup there. Sonogo and Drew Timmy. You know, if one of those guys can get the other guy in foul trouble, these are the two leading scorers left in the NCAA tournament. But to me, UConn's been the most dominant team, as a team, the most dominant team 
in the NCAA tournament. They assist on 68% of their field goals. They're shooting 45% from the three. They dominate you on the glass plus 37. They dominate you in the paint, and they're connected defensively. You know, it might not be Sonogo. It might be Klingon. It might not be Hawkins. It might be Jackson. Uh, they've got really good guard play out of Tristan Newton. But to me, I watch this UConn team, and I've watched them a lot because I go over and watch them practice all the time. I've mm -hmm. watched this team grow and gain trust. I've watched this team buy in. I'm a big believer in you are your habits. If you watch this UConn team practice like I have, the way they play is no different than the way they practice, with a sense of purpose, competitive, tough, high energy, but poised. I really like this UConn team as, as well as Gonzaga's playing. I'm all in on the con. Let me transition to the Midwest region because we've got Miami and Houston scheduled to go up against one another. Handicap that for us real quick. Yeah, look, look, this is a, a Houston team that relies on turning you over and getting to the offensive glass where they rebound 37% of their misses. Their best offense sometimes is the second shot. This is a Miami team that doesn't turn it over. That Norchad O'Meara is an elite rebounder. He's averaging 15 rebounds a game, Norchad O'Meara, for Miami in the NCAA tournament. Uh, back Backcourts will be a great matchup. Marcus Sasser is dynamic. I mean, he's absolutely terrific. But I'll tell you what, Isaiah Wong, ACC Player of the Year. I like Miami in the upset. I like Miami's ability to rebound the basketball and get extra possessions. I like Miami's backcourt. And then they have an X factor, Jordan Miller. 6'7", hybrid forward, transit from George Mason's, been back to my, at Miami for the last two years. He's a brutal matchup because at 6'7", he shoots the three well enough. He can put it on the floor. He rebounds the basketball. He's my X factor. The ability to rebound the ball, the ability to take care of the basketball. I've got Miami and a slight upset over the number one seat, Houston. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.